um, we, we are proceeding now to the final paper of this um, symposium by Professor Matthew Melvin Pushki. Uh, he's an associate professor of history at the University of South Carolina. He specializes in early modern in Islamicate and in intellectual and imperial history with a focus on the theory and practice of the occult sciences in Timurid Safavid Iran and the broader Persianate world to the 19th century. Uh, he has a disciplinary focus on the history of science, history of philosophy, and history of the book. His several forthcoming books include The Occult Science of Empire in Akrilu Safavid Iran, Two Shirazi Letrists and their Manuals of Magic. And he's also co editor of two volumes uh, Islamic Occult Occultism, New Perspectives, 2017, and Islamic, Islamic Aid Occult Sciences in Theory and Practice, 2020. So, Professor uh, Melvin Kushki, I turn it over to you. Thank you, Beatrice. Uh, let me share my screen. Everyone see that okay? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. All right, so um, I'm going to try to put a little bit more of a cosmological uh, and also social um, context to all the, uh, the papers that we, the you know, brilliant papers that we've been uh, we've uh, been been hearing. Um, more on the intellectual history side, uh, as uh, that's my specialty. Uh, Ibn Turka is the guy I did my dissertation on, and he's kind of been my uh, psychopomp. Uh, you know, my uh, my uh, my introduction into the wild and woolly world of uh, you know, Timurid, Safavid, and Persianate intellectual history more generally. Um, I won't get into all the details of his life. Uh, I've written about him quite a, uh, in quite a number of places. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the summary is that he is the most influential occult philosopher of Timurid Iran with major um, uh, ramifications for intellectual history, but also cultural you know, history, material history as well. Um, and as I argue, um, even uh, his influence can be seen even in Mughal architecture, um, well, you know, Indo-Timurid architecture. Uh, he provides the first uh, systematic letrist, which is the or Kabbalist uh, physics and metaphysics. Um, but he's doing this in, in the service of the Timurid empire. He is the first to theorize um, the Timurid empire. Uh, not simply as a historical, you know, in terms of historical legitimacy or political legit legitimacy, but metaphysical legitimacy, scientific leg legitimacy. Uh, right. Um, Bison Vore is at the core of his project to legitimize the Timurid Empire in scientific or occult scientific terms. His central question he's asking, especially in his correspondence with, with Bison Lord and other Timurid rulers, um, can these crazy warlords be turned into philosopher kings? Um, they can, right? Uh, again, as uh, Maria uh, was talking about yesterday, uh, Alexander the Great becomes a primary model here. So if Alexander can do it, the Timurids uh, can be made into Alexanders as well. But how do you do this? Again, with the Siddha Astrar, you do it primarily through the occult sciences. Uh, Ibn Turka is very much um, uh, in this camp. He attempts to turn three Timurid rulers, um, or would-be rulers, into philosopher kings. Uh, Iskandar Sultan, of course, um, his uh, first and most, and definitely favorite uh, Timurid ruler. Um, uh, he was extremely uh, disappointed when that did not work out. Um, he turned to Baisalvur after Iskandar was, uh, was murdered by Shah Rukh, his uncle. Um, he cultivated a relationship with Baisalvur over about 15 years um, as his main uh, hope for Timurid philosopher kingship and also his main uh, uh, mouthpiece to Shah Rukh. 
Um, he was very disappointed with Shahrukh as well, um, who was much more conservative in his approach, um, was not interested in a scientific theory uh, or practice of Timurid empire. Um, and when Bisonglor was not able to, to uh, achieve philosopher kingship, he turned to Ulugberg finally um, at uh, the end of his career. Um, as Ibn Turka defines it, uh, this, this, his vision of Timurid philosopher kingship specifically, um, an Alexandrian world conquering patron of the arts and sciences, especially the occult sciences, and a scientist and an artist in his own right, willing to take lettrism, al Mahruf, as master guiding principle in a theoretical and physical construction of henological empire. Again, sort of the imperial expression of Tawhid. Uh, but again, scientific terms, uh, occult scientific terms. So Alexander the Great is uh, is the the thread running through Ibn Turka's works to these three uh, Timurid patrons. He has four letters preserved uh, to Bisnagod, um, written from Yazd and Herat, uh, respectively, probably between 1420 and 1423, near the height of his career. Um, Bicentler commissioned two treatises from him, both of which are heavily occult scientific and both of which are heavily imperialist. Uh, the Monazir Baz and Raz, uh, the debate of feast and fight, and the Risale uh, Sot Muluk, the query of kings. Both of these together uh, set out the most comprehensive theory of Timurid imperialism uh, to date. He was not successful, as I said, uh, Shah Rukh was, was quite conservative and um, he was summoned for inquisition three times in Herat during his, uh, his career, um, especially after the, the, uh, uh, the debacle, 1427 debacle, uh, a Harufi uh, operative tried to assassinate Shah Rukh and he was implicated. Um, obviously it's, it's all, um, trumped up charges, uh, as he said, as he explains in four, uh, four apologies, two of which were addressed to Bisonglor. Again, Bisonglor, uh, in the Tim, at the Timur court was his primary mediator. He also wrote uh, two treatises for uh, Bisonglor's sons, uh, Al-Adin um, and Sultan Muhammad, probably uh, one for Sultan Muhammad. Um, but yeah, these are, these are not occultist uh, or letterist treatises. The point being, he's very closely connected to Weissenvor and Weissenvor's court, um, or he, would, he wishes to make himself indispensable to Weissenvor's court with mixed results. So just to get a, a sense of what Ibn Turka hoped um, from, uh, was hoping from his uh, his relationship to with Bisonglor, we need to understand his relationship very, very briefly with Iskandar and Urugbeg as well. Uh, Iskandar Sultan uh, needs no introduction to this audience, of course. Uh, but what I do want to emphasize is that Iskandar Sultan was successfully converted to um, a letterist vision of imperial uh, theory and practice by Ibn Turka. Um, he openly says, uh, as a scientist in his own right, that letrism ilm huruf is the supreme form of ilm tawhid, and ilm tawhid is the supreme form of political ideology. Right, one one empire, one king, one empire, one god. Uh, he also, obviously, as a skandar, is Alexander. Right, um, and he is like Alexander in a cult scientific pursuit of a Platonopolis. Ibn Turka um, had his highest hopes in this uh, in this figure. Uh, of course, you know uh, we don't need to discuss uh, his horoscope, uh, but I do also want to emphasize here that um, this, uh, if you analyze it astrologically, um, this is what philosopher kingship looks like. This is the most um, beautiful example of philosopher kingship in uh, the material record in the Persian arts of the book. Um, I won't get into the, the details, uh, but suffice it to say, he is a philosopher, he is a king, he is a warrior, he is a saint, uh, everything you can possibly imagine. This is, this is the image of the insanic combat. This is the perfect man. 
and Iskandar claims that status. Um, again, he was very excited about uh, Iskandar Sultan's project and was very much a part of it. I'll very briefly read one of his letters to Iskandar uh, just to give you a taste of what he, you know, his mode of addressing Bison Lord as well. His sultanic presence has manifested the effects of the central receptivity, the product of the blessed tree of his native aptitude, in that he's exhibited interest in the sciences treating of reality and forms of direct knowledge and discussed with conventional terminologies and standard sciences. These all constitute a sign foretold of the veracity of the leading courtiers of the court of prophetic guidance and the hems of, that, of the happy arrival of the era of auspicious conjunction are seen to be embroidered with their words. The reality of this event as expressed in hadith and Quranic verses is symbolic, uh, in symbolic and elusive fashion is manifest to the citizens of the city of worthiness, God be praised. Time made a promise that has now been fulfilled. On ayon hamidod shod. So this is a refrain that he repeats with Weissenvor and again with Uruguay. You are the fulfillment of, you know, cosmic promise. Right. Um, this is again an ideological an imperial statement, but also a scientific one. He is uh, referring to uh, specifically, you know, a specific uh, Saturn Jupiter conjunction marking the, the beginning of Timurid rule. And when he talks about the Ulum Hariri or Ma'arof Zori, he's talking about the mathematical sciences, especially astronomy. Again, Ulukberg is the fulfillment of his, uh, his push in this direction. Um, you know, uh, cut off in the case of Iskandar. Uh, but we're talking Uluma Hadiqi specifically, we're talking about mathematical science, we're talking about letterism. Uh, and again, Uluq uh, was the realization of his hopes as well as he makes it very clear um, in his writings to this Timurid sovereign. Um, uh, he's the only one of the three who is cel celebrated by his own contemporaries uh, but as the Sultan Fedasuf, um, Sultan scientist. He's the most famous philosopher king, uh, you know, Sultan scientist in Islamic history, uh, at least in historiography. Um, this is Ibn Turka's dream come true. He is, he builds the, mon he, he builds the observatory. He, uh, the uh, Urlberg Zij, uh, the star tables uh, are still being used because of their accuracy in London in the 19th century, right? This is what Ibn Turk is pushing for. The Uluma Hariri is the mathematization of the cosmos, the mathematization of astronomy, um, under the rubric of letterism, the supreme metaphysical and physical science. Um, the fat, uh, Ibn Turk's social connection with the observatory and that whole you know Udubek project is quite um, you know uh, well documented. Uh, here is one. Uh, 16th century stuff of a reception of that connection with Ibn Turka hanging out with his best friend and greatest student, Sharaf Adin Ali Yazdi, and Qazi Zadeh Rumi, right? Uh, Yazdi, of course, is the great Timurid historian and mathematician who worked at the observatory for a time. Um, and Qazi Zadeh Rumi was the second director of the observatory. These guys are close knit. These guys are besties, right? So we know that his Letras project is also about mathematizing astronomy through these social connections. Uh, I won't get into too much of this uh, theory, uh, but I do want to say that his masterwork, uh, the Kitab al-Maflahis, the Book of Inquiries or Investigations, the first summa of Islamic Neopythagoreanism, calling explicitly in the preface to Uruqbert uh, for the mathematization of all sciences, um, coincides, the, the, the composition date 1420 coincides with the founding of the observatory. That is not a coincidence. Um, he also writes the Isharh uh, Basmele on the ontological function of the, of the letter B. Uh, it's a full, full length uh, work, uh, book length work. Uh, he dedicates it to Shah, uh, to Odulberg, and he sends a copy to his best friend. Uh, Qazi Zadeh Rumi in uh, Samarkand. Uh, I won't get into details, but suffice it to say, and here's uh, Qazi Zadeh uh, Rumi's letter of appreciation upon receipt of the, um, of the book. 
he's very excited about it. Um, I won't get into the details of this uh, of this dedicatory preface to Ulugberg from Ibn Turka, uh, but suffice it to say, this is the most um, uh, terminological, technically exact expression of Timurid uh, philosopher kingship. Um, again, this is uh, realized in the construction of the observatory. I won't get into the details, but um, yeah, uh, it's a very poetic, very technically um, robust uh, account of what philosopher kingship means. And at the end, he finally exclaims, uh, uh, right, I've been, I've been, you know, holding out hope for, uh, you know, just such a time, and that time is yours. This is exactly what he first told Iskandar back in like the 1410s, early 1410s, 1411, 12. Um, massively disappointed, obviously, with Shahro's murder of his nephew. Um, he does the same to Udugberg. And I will, as I will show uh, very briefly, uh, Baisangor is his third candidate for the realization of his hopes. Again, no need to introduce him in this audience. So uh, before we get to the correspondence itself, uh, just very briefly, um, his, uh, the first work that Baisangor commissioned from him, uh, the Munazir Baz Raz, um, uh, as I have uh, argued, there's three early, uh, you know, uh, Timurid uh, manuscripts uh, of this work, uh, the feast, uh, the, the debate of feast and fight. I have a, an article on this, if anyone is curious uh, about the details. Um, but, you know, suffice it to say here that this work proposes is that his first, um, his first formulation of occult scientific Timurid imperialism. Uh, whereby the Timurid Empire must fill, uh, must become the avatar of the coincidentia positorum, uniting all opposites under its universal aegis. This is a, a doctrine of your universal empire. Uh, the second work uh, that Ibn Turka, uh, that Bison were commissioned um, explicitly from Ibn Turka uh, for the benefit of Shahroch is the uh, al Muluk, the Query of Kings. It is uh, similarly um, a, a manual, well, not similarly, it's, it's not theoretical, it's, it's more practical, it's a manual for becoming a philosopher king through, the, through letter magic, through talismanry um, in particular, right? So this is very practical where uh, his former treatise for Bisonglor is more theoretical. At the end, you can see the the payoff uh, for this theory in practice, where he uh, analyzes uh, Shahroch's name uh, to prove that he uh, is the model for kingship during the whole of the ninth Islamic century, the 15th century. Um, again, this is uh, openly ideologi ideological, but also scientific um, operation. Again, Shahroch does not seem to have been convinced but he basically calls the 15th century Shahrohi in this treatise. All right, to his correspondence. Um, I obviously don't have time to get uh, into all the details, uh, but there are four of these letters, uh, as I said, um, and they're increasing in complexity uh, and length as, as we go through his uh, career and his relationship to Bison Water. Uh, this uh, increase in length is um, something that's very uh, well attested in contemporary in shot manuals. Um, uh, in general, for you know, for uh, uh, general epistolographical purposes, um, you need to keep your letters short if you are. Cultiv trying to cultivate new patrons at the beginning of your relationship. And as you, you know, establish a relationship, you may increase the length of your letters, right? Um, so, uh, inferiors must have short letters to superiors. Um, you can see that the burgeoning of a friendship, an actual uh, friendship between uh, Ibn Turka and Bison Lur, um, over uh, in the early 1420s. This is the first letter, probably 1420, 
more of a calling card or more of a greeting card. Um, and again, I, unfortunately, uh, this is the only microfilm copy of a Magis the Sinha um, manuscript I have, uh, I had to work with. I have a full edition and almost a full tra translation of all four letters. Um, but yeah, this is a really bad microfilm. So, uh, you know, bear with me, but so uh, yeah, this is, this is what it, he sounds like. This is how he initiates this is what you do as an occult, as a philosopher to initiate um, a relationship with the Timurid court. Allahumma kama alayta bunyan al-mulk wa-deen bi'ulu al-shatnihi fil-khafiqeen mu'izzin al-dawla wa-deen malakan faj'alhu fi, and I can't read this word, uh, something, tayyib malhuzat an dhar inayataka munsarakan kamtinina fuqarat da'avat ikhlas ayatra so he's basically he's asking to meet right um and these meetings do take place uh, and yeah, if anyone can read this word, which I can't, I would love to know in the Q and A. Um, like I said, this is the best copy. This is the, from the Munsha Ati Yazdi, um, his, his best friend. Uh, this can preserves three of the four extant letters uh, we have uh, from Ibn Turka to Baisangur. Uh, this is another copy. It's less reliable, much more readable. Microfilm uh, has two of the four letters. And one of them is preserved in um, the earliest Majmua of Ibn Turka's works, uh, copied mostly during the author's life with his own autographs and copied uh, perhaps by Yazdi himself. Uh, one of the letters is here in the margin. And he always uh, usually signs the Cantonina Fogara, Saina Turke. All right, so just to give a taste in the uh, few minutes remaining um, of you know, what it means as a philosopher to cultivate a philosopher king in the Timurid context. The letter that the prince's capable scribes set down the pages of instruction and mentorship some time before has now reached this wretch who is therewith crowned the head, in, uh, the head of his glorying and joy. Now this letter mentioned that a certain individual has objected to my treatise, probably the Sot al Muluk, um, commissioned by Baisangur, despite the fact that everything therein is clearly founded upon rational and traditional proofs. If this, objective, if this objection is a scholarly one, then the learned members of the prince's court will easily be able to counter it after considering the matter. And if this objection stems from vainglorious posturing as an attempt to protect the markets for certain sheikhs demagoguery, this too should be obvious to the intelligence. Because the substance of the objection was not noted, my rejoinder must be confined to this general statement. My world warding lord, the type of discourse contained in that treatise constitutes a virginal bride from the realm of the unseen, whose skirt the immature cannot hope to attain and in whose, into whose mysteries they cannot be inducted. That right is reserved for true men alone. I wrote this treatise in obedience to the king's exalted mandate. That which is commanded is always warranted. Of course, many people attempt to pass themselves off as learned, but learned men are very few indeed. On the day of the hunt, he rides after the game. He shoots much, but it's little. Um, so a big theme in Ibn Turka's correspondence with, with Baisangur is countering um, complaints about his treatises at Baisangur's and especially Shahro's court. Again, he was subject to interrogation, inquisition three times in Herat. So he's defending his honor as a scholar. And again, this is academic politics. We talk about, we, we talk, you know, in similar ways these days in peer reviews and, 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 and elsewhere. Um, but yeah, basically, um, he's, uh, he's dissing Shahro's court as a site where um, unqualified scholars tend to congregate. Uh, they, they, don't under, they don't understand his project, uh, the, the lettrist uh, theory, theorization of Timurid imperialism. Jumping over the third letter to the fourth, again, in the interest of time, uh, just to show you how he uses uh, poet, you know, rhetoric uh, for scientific purposes uh, in a way that might be quite attractive to Bison Lord as a calligrapher. 
Uh, two days ago is the blackness of the Mohakkak script of the night, the script of night that has dirty day's delightful cheek was reduced to nask, and the rust of darkness that had tarnished the sun's blade was polished again. Bright dawn cast into this wretch's soul a burning desire to kiss the threshold of the water of life, shot roast court. He therefore set out to pay his respects at the world warding court, experiencing the bliss and fortune that accrues to all those uh, who cleave there too. And as he drew near there, drew near, there arrived the most felicitous news. His sultanic eminence, Weissenvor, having expressed the desire to go for a ride, had the same desti destination. And the letter, and it's full of poetry, is extremely happy, right? It's extreme, it's it is shot through uh, you know literary terms with joy. Suddenly his sight, which had seen woes, was illuminated by the rising of the resplendent rays of the sun of fortune. A world appeared in the guise of a sultan, a sun manifested in the raiment of a jamshid. A pure, pure, a pure pearl shone forth from the munificent sea. He beheld that sun shaded by the parasol of spiritual fortune and infinite grace, and kingly formed the very shadow of God on earth, astride all aims with, the, with plodding heaven itself hanging from his saddle straps. He arrived writing as an Alexander with fortune and felicity writing before and behind. Again, Weissenburg is his second shot at creating an Alexander. Um, and finally, just to, to conclude, uh, let's see what I have time. Um, the last two, uh, two of his, of his last works he wrote before dying in 1432 um, in frustration, waiting on the review of his case at the court uh, in Herat, um, were addressed to Bysonglor. So the last, his last hope, you know, Bulldog aside, is Bysonglor. Um, again, disappointed hope, but um, extremely interesting for us as intellectual historians, uh, historians of empire and material uh, cultural historians. Uh, the same themes uh, recur in this Nasset and Mastur, the second uh, version of it, um, where he's basically um, calling the scholarly scene a, a snake pit. Um, he advocates strongly for Sunni internationalism. Um, he advocates also for disciplining uh, charlatan Sufis who have been causing him all, you know, all manner of headache. Um, he is one of the first uh, writers in Persian to uh, quote Hafez, prose writers to constantly quote Hafez. Um, so that's interesting. Um, he also dismisses completely millenarian fears, uh, the, you know, the conquest of Iran by a Sufi army uh, within two years. He rejects it uh, as unscientific nonsense. And he's very, very hard on the Hurufis in this case. Um, and finally, um, the last work he wrote before he died in 1432 to Weissenburg, his creed, his final statement of, you know, his summary of his life's vision, um, which on the face of it is quite, well, orthodox. It's all about the Sunni internationalism. Uh, he basically says he is only following Ghazali and Razi, Fakhreddin Razi. Um, and he's trying to, at least it seems, uh, excuse his investment in the occult sciences, uh, especially you know, the, the, the classic uh, hadith, uh, right? learn even sorcery. He says, I'm only doing it because that's just what scholars do. You have to, you know, you, not that I'm practicing necessarily, but you have to investigate every branch of knowledge like Khazari and Razi. The, if you, understand this work, his last work too, by some in context, however, um, Azali and Razi in the 15th century, and especially in the 16th century uh, and onward, are occultists. This is, this is central, especially Fakhreddin Razi, who has manuals of magic, a very, very important manual of uh, occult science, the Sir, uh, the Sir Maktoum. So when you understand that context, that Razi and even Qazari are letterists by the 15th century and onward, uh, then his last, uh, you know, plea to Weissenburg makes more uh, makes more sense. Uh, just very briefly, uh, this is what this is how he does the the Bismillah, the Basmala, right, uh, with separated letters in his uh, uh, you know, in the manuscripts of his um, his apologies. Uh, when you see the letters separated like this, we're talking about a letterist. 
Uh, here's another example. Um, and this is the this is the uh, itself. So uh, I won't get into this uh, text, but um, suffice it to say, uh, he just says, I am following Ghazali and Razi, following Hadith Ta'alum Hat al But this is this is his life's project to the uh, Timurid um, you know, ruling elite. Uh, Iskandar, Baisanglor, and Urugberg. Um, it pays off in the case of Urugberg in terms of, you know, the founding of the observatory as he had hoped and his friends working there. Um, but also, you know, in terms of Sehad, right, you know, sorcery, occult science in general, we can use it uh, as, as that here. Um, this uh, does not succeed in his lifetime, but as I argue, I have argued, and I will continue to argue. Um, this represents a paradigm shift in terms of imperial theory, the theory of empire, but also the practice of empire, um, in, including material practice, including architecture, including arts of the book. Uh, it it's marks the beginning of what I call a letterist consciousness uh, that Bisonglor, as a calligrapher, uh, was a, should have been a sympathetic uh, you know, audience. Um, so Ibn Turk had hoped. Uh, but I, I uh, see the Indo-Timurid uh, uh, heritage uh, or legacy, uh, or Ibn Turka's legacy is much more evident, I would say, in the uh, Indo-Timurid um, context than the Timurid. Um, he, he died disappointed, frustrated, defeated, um, but uh, you know, had the last laugh in the 16th and 17th centuries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, wonderful talk. A great conclusion to our